السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us too. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah and humanity at large. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, you know that we are speaking about those who were the closest to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who have been told by him that for you is Jannah. There were many of them who were told for you is Jannah. You will earn or you will actually be in paradise. From among them, 10 were told in one sitting, in one narration by name, 10 names mentioned one after the other. The first from among them was Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And what I will do today, because I have about 30 minutes to speak to you now, I won't go into his entire history. And I won't go into every detail of his life, but I will take a few details and we will draw lessons that we can apply in our own lives so that we can also become people who are better, who are closer to Allah, who are closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before I begin, I actually want to say that every one of us is loved by Allah. If you doubt that, there is a problem in your heart. We are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He has chosen us to be from among the ummah of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And He has created us in the first place. So therefore, His mercy shall definitely encompass us. No matter what you've done, for as long as you are trying your best to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never give up. Let's go into the life of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, starting with his name. What was his name? So every one of us say, says Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was just a kunia. A kunia means like a, a pet name. You know, you have a nickname given to someone. You say Abu Fulan. Someone has a beard. You say Abu Lihya. You know, Abu. So Abu means someone who has the quality of. It could also mean father of. Sometimes literally, father of this person, father of that person, and sometimes father of jokes, for example, father of uh, a smile, a beautiful smile, for example. So they call him, uh, you know, for example, like I said, Abu Lihya, you know, the guy who has a beard, etc. I remember there was a guy in the Middle East who had a cap. He became famous for that, and he, they called him Abu Cap. So here, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, it was a name given to him, and his real name was actually Abdullah. Were you aware of that? The reason why we need to know this is because he was the best of those to tread the earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest and the most noble, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have from among the humankind, the best of the lot were the prophets of Allah. They were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So indeed they were the best. After them, there was a specific person who was considered the best of all humankind after the prophets of Allah. And that is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Abdullah. Abdullah. His father was known as Abu Quhafa. That was also a nickname. It was also a kunia, Abu Quhafa. His father's name was actually Uthman, Uthman, subhanallah. So that makes his name Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu anhu. I'm sure a lot of you might not have known that before today, subhanallah. Can you just uh, show me hands? How many did not know that? Abdullah ibn Uthman, subhanallah. I thank Allah for giving me the opportunity to share with you the name of the best of Mankind after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a man known as Abdullah ibn Uthman ibn Amir at taymi al-Qurashi radiallahu anhu. What a beautiful man. And he is indeed one of my, one of my heroes, a legend, subhanallah. I was asked a few months ago when I was in Perth, 
Who would you like to be with in Jannah? Who would you like to meet from among the companions or from among the people who are, uh, you know, religious, etc., etc.? And I remember saying Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. Obviously, after the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I really love to be with this man because he had some qualities that really we need to learn from. We need to learn from. Where did the Siddiq come from? The Siddiq came later on in his life because he realized and recognized that his friend who was Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a liar. So every time people said something referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would believe it immediately, immediately, without a doubt. When the Mi'raj happened and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up to the seven heavens from Baytul Maqdis, meaning from Mecca to Baytul Maqdis, gone all the way up to the seven heavens, come down and come back. Subhanallah. You know what? The people of Quraysh, obviously they began to laugh at it and they began to say, what a joke. And they started asking a question to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, would you believe this? Without saying, who said it? The minute they said his name, he said, if he said it, it's definitely the truth. Cannot be a lie. Subhanallah. Now, I have a question for myself and yourselves. How many of us can be so truthful that people around you would say, if he said it, if she said it, it's not a lie. Subhanallah. Sometimes we're too embarrassed of the reality. So what we do in order to run away from it, just lie. Subhanallah. Just lie. Or create it in such a way that it's not actually a lie, but it's not true as well. It's just in the middle, dangling, hanging. You know, subhanallah. Someone asked you, uh, did you go? Did you go to that club? You say, well, people go. You know, you didn't say I went, I didn't go. You know, you just say people go. It's neither a yes nor a no. That's just an example that comes to my mind. We need to be so truthful that we create a reputation. If this person's given you their word, it is done. Consider it done. Inshallah, I hope and I pray that I can work on this. And every one of us can work on it because if we don't, then we haven't learned something from the Laqab as Siddiq. Laqab is like a title given to him, as Siddiq. We need to learn something from it. And the biggest thing that I learned from it is I, I need to make myself such that when people say, when I say something, people believe it. And then we would also be able to recognize others who are similar. And we got to start the trend. People say, well, everyone lies. No, they don't. Not everyone lies. May Allah make it easy. He was born, Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu anhu was born two years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was actually a Khalifa for two years, which makes his age upon his death exactly the same as the age of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he passed away. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away at what age? 63. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu passed away at what age? 63, but because he was born two years later, he passed away two years later as well. Subhanallah, amazing. That brings me to a very interesting point. How old are you now is a question you need to ask yourself. If you are 40, well, the most beloved unto Allah lived for another 23 years. Subhanallah, subhanallah. And if you're like me, a little bit older, then you need to worry. Subhanallah, because you know that Allah's mercy will take you to Jannah, but you need to keep trying. That's the secret. Keep trying. I'm convinced that if I were to die or if you were to die, we would be going to a much better place than the places we are or we could be while alive. I'm convinced because I have faith. And I know that no matter what bad I've done in my life, I know I'm going to be facing someone more merciful than my own mother by a hundred times and beyond. So I have so much of hope. But to get that mercy, I just need to keep trying. When I do something wrong, I seek the forgiveness of Allah. I keep trying and I don't intentionally plan to be an evil person. You know, you go and you pinch and you do this and you steal and you commit this and that and every evil that you can think of. And you say, but didn't you hear we were told that some Allah is much more merciful than my own mother. My mother doesn't mind. May Allah forgive us. May Allah make it easy for us. But I'm just, you know, renewing the fact that we are believers and we believe that we're going to a better place. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, when he was young, a few things happened that we need to know about. Number one, he always had the best of friends. The best of friends. Those who were truthful people, those who did not have bad habits, 
Number two, he never ever touched alcohol. Even though there was no ruling about alcohol, he didn't touch it. From the beginning, before it was prohibited, he was one of those who didn't drink because he saw people drinking and what happened to them, they would lose their mind. And he said, not for me, which means he had good qualities. Now, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I've tried to work on this and I'd like you to work on it too. And I'd like you to understand your children. May Allah bless you with children. Just say, I mean, even if you're not married, may Allah bless you with children. Say, I mean. MashaAllah. You might want to know why did I say that? Even if you're not married, just say Ameen. Because if you say, may Allah bless me with good offspring, and you're not yet married, the dua includes the fact that you're going to get married, and then things will happen, and then you'll have kids. It's like saying, Ya Allah, I'd like to have the latest Tesla. Help me, Ya Allah, so that I can buy it. What would happen? Well, if you're sitting unemployed, perhaps you'll get a job, and thereafter you'll be earning money. And thereafter you'll be doing what and what you'll buy so many other things and a Tesla will be 10th on your list. But because that came in your dua, the other nine things came as well. You follow? So mashallah, you say, may Allah grant me pious offspring. That's a good enough dua to say, Mr. Handsome must walk along. You know, subhanallah, may Allah make it easy. You're waiting for Mr. Right. And this is why some of the intelligent boys, when you ask them, what's your name? You'd say, my name is Abbas Right. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq had good friends, radiallahu anhu, from the beginning, he had good friends. I promise you, if you had good friends, Habibi, you don't need to show that to me, I've got one better than yours here, Shir. You can. Uh, don't worry, 29 minutes, 59 seconds, I'll be done. Uh, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, had the best of friends. And I promise you, with us, we need very good friends. If you want to be a good person, the first thing you need to do, ask yourself who your friends are, who you mix with. I promise you that's the biggest thing I learned from Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu in terms of relationships, in terms of your social circles. Subhanallah. My children, and I'd like to extend it to your children too, if you want to give them advice as they are going into universities or as they are departing the home or when they're growing up, you need to do two things. You need to build a relationship with them because that's what will solve problems. People come and say, please come and explain to my daughter, you know, she's doing this and doing that. Sister, you are the mother. You're supposed to have spent so much time with your daughter all along and built a relationship. Father, you are supposed to have come home. Ma, ma, ma. You're supposed to have come home. And you're supposed to have spent time with your kids before it got to where it is now. A lot of us have problems with children, not because they have been diverted and they have lost the path, because we've lost the path. We didn't really build a relationship with them. So amazing how I learned this. You tell your children, firstly, you develop a relationship with them. And secondly, tell them to watch the type of friends they keep or guide them. Guide them regarding their friends because that is what I learned from Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was already a friend of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, I know someone might say, well, that was taqdeer. That was destiny. Well, I can tell you something. That's quite a wise answer because you don't blame destiny for your failure. But what you do do is wherever you've done something and now it's already water under the bridge. You can say, look, it was taqdeer. Inshallah, I'm going to try and do better and continue making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had the best of friends. I will make sure I have them and I will encourage my children to have them. Because when, when people are going to university and they ask me, I just give you an example and I don't know why I'm saying uni, but I think that's the age where people are molded, you know, molded. You've got to tell them when they ask me for advice, I say just have the best of friends. Make sure you have pure friends with good morals and values and lovely sober habits, etc, etc. And you know what happens? People who have good friends, when the friends lead salah, even if they're lazy, they will just join along. People who have good friends, when they're in hijab, they will also wear the hijab without a word being said. They will go to a halal place. They will have good values, a lovely set of morals. But if your friends are not of that level, what do you expect? They've all gone into the wrong direction. And what happens? These people go as well into the wrong direction with them. This was what I learned from Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Something amazing, something unique, something powerful. So he did not taste alcohol. Another thing, he never worshipped idols from the beginning. 
It's a point we need to know. This means that even though there are things happening across the globe that might seem, you know, that might be fair seeming to a lot, if according to your level of understanding this is wrong, don't participate in it. Hold yourself, keep yourself back. Who told Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu that worshipping sticks and stones or foodstuffs or, for example, uh, idols, etc., was wrong? No one told him. Everyone used to do it. The whole of Quraysh used to participate with the exception of a few like Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and his friend Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was not yet a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu did not worship the idols. He didn't drink alcohol. He had a lovely set of friends. He, he was a very, very successful businessman. He was so wealthy. At that stage, he was well known in Makkah al Mukarramah and respected, although he was in his 30s. He was in his 30s at, and at the stage where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got prophethood. And he heard about it from others. And then he went to his friend and he says, Look, I've heard from Quraysh that you are saying, don't worship the idols, don't do this, don't do that. You've got to worship Allah alone. You've got to leave what your forefathers have been doing where it's wrong. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Yes, I am saying that and I have said that and I tell you my friend, Allah has sent me as a prophet to remind people to worship him alone and to quit everything that is bad and evil, to do good and to be kind, etc. When he heard it, you know what he said? He said, I believe. I believe in what you've said. He was the first from the men, from the men, from the grown men to be a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The first from all mankind was Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiallahu anha. Then we have Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu who was the first from among the boys. We have Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu who was the first from among the men. So these names you've got to know them. We have Zayd ibn Haritha. He was a little slave boy who was freed. He accepted Islam. Right at the beginning, they did not doubt what was being said. You know why? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not call towards himself, not once. Today we hear people speaking across the globe, mashallah. When you hear a scholar speak or anyone else speak, the minute they call towards themselves, they are wrong. When they call towards Allah, an improvement of yourself for the sake of Allah, you know that we need to pray for them. We do not need to develop a personal relationship with them, especially if it's for the wrong reasons, because that's what happens sometimes. And we need to realize they are human as well. They make, may, may make mistakes, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better people. The moment someone calls towards Allah and asks you to improve for your goodness, you must thank Allah that someone's actually sent to you to remind you to do good, to become a better person, purify yourself. And this is what Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu recognized immediately. He says, this is my friend. I've known him as a truthful person. He didn't lie. He didn't cheat. He hasn't deceived anyone. He is as-sadiq al-ameen. He is the honest, the trustworthy. And he is telling me, I am the Prophet of Allah. He says, I believe you're the Prophet of Allah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that we recognize truth from falsehood. And we're able to follow those who remind us. <laughs> follow those who are asking you nothing. They are not seeking material benefit from you. But rather, they are the guided ones who are trying to guide you. Allah will ask you. Have you not heard our verses being recited before you, reminding you of the day of judgment and thereafter? What answer are we going to give? We're going to have to say, yes, 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 you have, O oh Allah. And we have heard them. May Allah make it easy for us. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu accepts Islam. As he accepted Islam, there was a crisis. What was the crisis? People started trying to affect them in their business. They want to boycott them in their business. Because why? They are Muslim. Doesn't that ring a bell? You're a Muslim, sometimes people say, don't buy there, buy from the store next door. It happens, that's your store. But you have people who will do this to you because you're a Muslim, they won't, they won't promote you. It can happen. Unfortunately, it's their sickness. 
Must someone's evil make you evil? No, that's a Muslim. Keep on doing good, no matter how bad people are to you. Remember these words. That's what Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu did. He kept on doing good. He became even better as a result. Do you know what he did? The money that he had, he started looking for people who were oppressed. He started looking for people who were being harmed, especially those who were enslaved by the Jahiliyyah, by the pre-Islamic ignorance period. A Bilal ibn Rabah was being, radiallahu anhu, he was being tortured. So what did Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu do? He went to Umayyah bin Khalaf. He tells him, you know what, I want to buy this slave. He says, well, it's not for sale. And then he says, you know what, I wouldn't even sell him for a penny because he's so cheap. Astaghfirullah. That ended in Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu using his own money to buy someone and tell him, listen, I bought you so that they do not oppress you anymore and you are free for the sake of Allah. He did not do it to one. He did it to so many. The list is actually quite long, subhanallah. Malik ibn Fuhayra. There are actually so many of them, subhanallah. And you know what else he did? Those whom he knew, he went to them and he started telling them, you know what? Muhammad, peace be upon him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa my friend, our friend, he is definitely the Nabi of Allah. And I would suggest you accept because he's calling you towards worshipping your maker alone and no one else. And he's calling you towards goodness. He's asking us to leave and to abandon all evil and evil habits, etc, etc. And guess what happened? They started coming through one by one. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu came with the effort of his friend Abdullah ibn Uthman. Who was Abdullah ibn Uthman? I already told you he was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So Abdullah ibn Uthman is calling Uthman ibn Affan and he accepted it. Who else? Amazing. Do you know the 10 names of the 10 who are going to paradise? A lot of them were actually invited to Islam by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He is the one who went up to them and said, you know what? Come, listen to this. Listen to what this man is saying. <laughs> Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Talha. <laughs> Subhanallah. Who went to them? It was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He actually tried. Now what do I learn from it? It's good to know the history, but I told you today, I want to draw lessons. The lesson is, when I have goodness, do I share it with people? You know, we forward WhatsApp messages and I'm giving you something practical because I don't want to make things difficult. We forward WhatsApp messages that are jokes sometimes. It is permissible if that is something within limits. It's allowed, you're allowed to laugh. You know, this morning someone sent me a message and I forwarded it to a few of my friends and I can tell you what it was. They said, you know, I just want to thank all of my friends who have, you know, made my 2017 a, a, a beautiful success and they stood by me, etc. And I've dedicated this little song and the lyrics of the song are so beautiful and so good. And I, I, they touched my heart and I hope they can touch yours. And it was sent to me by a respectable person. So I'm looking at the song. I just downloaded it and I'm thinking, wow, is something big going to come out? And I promise you there's a Mongolian boy singing in Chinese or something. Nobody understands him. And he's just going, ah, twa, twa, da, man. And he's, whatever he's saying. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, this is a prank. Anyway, it made my day. <laughs> it made my day. And I just forwarded it to a few of my close buddies to make them laugh. You know what happens with your buddies? Some of them laugh and some of them say, waste of data. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So the point I'm raising is we're ready to share things like that, which really they don't harm you. They don't do any good. They don't do any bad. They're just a little laugh. But when it comes to a good, powerful message, we do not want to share those messages. We're too embarrassed sometimes. Now, let me teach you a thing or two. Nowadays, it's very, very difficult to get people to listen to more than three minutes. I've been advising my friends who are perhaps, you know, online that is to say when there is a, a clip that you forward someone, let's get into the topic as soon as they open the clip. You don't need to have an intro and you have a big thing wasting time. More than a second is a waste. Most of us don't realize that in the first second or two, we decide whether we want to listen to the rest of the message or not. Am I right? One second, not more. So in the first second, I need to make it clear that you need this message. And that's how it is. So therefore, don't send long, long things to someone. You know, when I see a long message, I leave it. I don't, unless it is a topic that I desperately need. Subhanallah, I don't read long messages. You want something, 
get to the point. That's what it is. Subhanallah. Don't do the purse story. You know the purse story? I can tell it to you because it's been a few years since I said it and I need to relate it again. So they say there was someone who was violent against a certain woman and that's unacceptable. Remember this. So when they brought him to the courts and they asked him, why were you violent? He said, you know what? This lady here, she had a big purse. And she was looking at me, smiling. She opened the purse. She took out a little purse from the first purse. And then she put the other one down. And then she looked at me and smiled. And then she opened the second purse and took out a third purse from inside the second purse and smiled at me and put it down. And then she opened the third purse and took out a fourth purse from the third purse. And she looked at me and smiled and put the third purse down. And then she opened the fourth purse and took out a fifth purse and looked at me and smiled and put the fourth purse down. And then she opened the fifth purse and she looked at me and smiled and she took out a sixth purse from inside the fifth purse and put the fifth purse down. And then she smiled at me. Then she opened the sixth purse and what did she do? She took out a seventh purse and she took that purse and she put the purse down. That was the sixth one. Then she opened the seventh one and she took out an eighth purse. So the judge says, hey, hey, get to the point. So he says, judge, judge, I'm only telling you the story and look how angry you're getting. I was right there. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Anyway, that was interesting. The point being raised is when you want to do something, get straight to the point. Get to the point. You want to say something to the point. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu got to the point and wallahi it helped these people. He was not embarrassed. What's my friend going to say? I'm a Muslim, etc. No, you're wearing a scarf. You must explain to your friends. This is why I do it. But for that, you will have to learn why you're doing it. Many people are prepared to give up Islam. I promise you the number is growing because of ignorance. That's why. That's why when you don't know your deen, when you haven't studied, when you haven't made the effort, for example, to, to go through proper answers for questions that people will legitimately ask you, you won't be able to answer them. And then you'll feel embarrassed. You feel like, you know, yeah, there are some people out there who are just there to get you, you know, just to get at you. Wallahi, we have belief, we have iman. But I promise you, it's a beautiful religion filled with love, respect of others, etc, etc. Don't let people make you think otherwise. Islam is not a religion of hate. Don't let people make you believe that. Trust me, they are wrong. They are totally wrong. You see people different from you. You should be even better to them because you are marketing your deen to them. And they will look at you. The day they hear bad about Muslims, they'll say, no way. I interact with so many Muslims at work. And guess what? They are lovely people. They are absolutely beautiful. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. This is a big thing that I learned from him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon these companions. And as he grew older, do you know what? Allah blessed him with the companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his life through the hijrah. He was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At a time of difficulty and hardship, he was always there. So a lot of the people accepted Islam through his effort. Every war that happened, he participated in it to defend Islam, to go back to try and get what they had lost in Mecca. And ultimately they got it, the victory of Mecca. He was the only one, the Prophet ﷺ told him to lead the prayers, although he was there himself, but he was unwell. He's the only one. So he was indeed the highest, the highest of all of the companions. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Uthman. He took up the Khilafah after the Prophet ﷺ passed away. And there were a beautiful, beautiful two years where the foundation was laid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Like I said, I just had 30 minutes to speak to you and I have a few more seconds to go. I want to tell you, in 30 minutes you cannot do justice to the entire life of someone, but the idea is to draw a few points and learn lessons for ourselves. I hope you benefited from what I've said. I'll see you later on in the day, inshallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.